Hi everyone, I'm a teacher on L10. I'm a full-time climate justice activist based in the Philippines, and I am guided by the principles of anti-imperialism, um, system change, collective action, but also joy and love. My focus and my work specifically focuses on climate action or climate justice. Uh, and in 2017, that was when I began my journey as a climate activist and then solidified even more in 2019 when we started our own youth organization here called Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines, where a lot of what we do is um, bringing students to to bringing students together and bringing them to the frontline communities to learn from the frontline communities how the climate impacts have affected the frontline communities and the solutions that they've come up with themselves already. Um, so YACAP or Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines is an alliance, a nationwide alliance um, that consists of both youth organizations and student councils, but also individuals. And we have chapters in North Central Luzon, um, NCR, South Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And it's a growing network that really aims to ensure that young people are empowered to lead the way in climate action and climate justice. And that's the work that we do here locally. Um, when there are typhoons, we also go into relief operations and we also join the campaigns of our environmental defenders for the various um, calls that they're asking for, whether it be against the reclamation projects that are uh, threatening our oceans and our fisher folk or um, the large-scale mining that are threatening our indigenous peoples and other campaigns such as that. And then we also engage internationally um, by building bridges with youth across the globe to ensure that our campaigns are stronger together, all for fighting for climate justice, starting with some campaigns like the fossil fuel phase out and ensuring that we have a just transition, ensuring that everyone has access to energy and electricity, um, but one that sustains and is sustainable for the planet. Since I was a kid, I've always been very invested and, and felt very close to the environment. And as Filipinas growing up, we all saw and experienced in one way or form the impacts of the climate crisis, seeing entire communities flooded, seeing um, people stranded on rooftops, experiencing some of the floods ourselves. But then we weren't taught that that was climate change. The way that a lot of climate education happened when we were growing up, in my generation at least, um, was that it was about polar bears and melting ice caps, and it was very technical and foreign and alienating and didn't talk about the experiences of Filipinos that are already happening and that we can do something about it. Um, it wasn't until 2017 when there was Lakbayan, um, where the Lumad indigenous peoples came to Manila to talk about their struggles, to talk about their issues, but also to, to share the stories of resistance and joys that they have in fighting back for the planet and for their homes, that I really understood and realized that we had to join the fight um, for the planet, for our home, for a better world. Since I there are two that come to mind immediately. So the first one is how, again, as I mentioned earlier, there is a lack of climate education um, that's contextualized, that's empowering within our institutions, within our schools, within the curriculum. And so you could be fighting for climate change, uh, for climate justice, and people won't know what that means. And so that is already a barrier because if people don't understand what you're fighting for, if people don't understand that there's an alternative to what we're experiencing, then they're not going to join that fight. Um, and then the other hand is that uh, activism is a dangerous, can be a dangerous thing here in the Philippines. So the Philippines is one of the most dangerous countries in the world for environmental defenders and activists. And there's extra violence on women environmental defenders and activists as well. And Combining that plus the lack of knowledge and understanding around what climate justice could be, it could mean that a lot of young people are afraid to join the cause of fighting for a better world, of building a better world together. Uh, because you don't know what it's about or what or that you can do something about it. And then you have the other hand where it's already scary to do something about it. And so those are two barriers. And what we've done to collectively um, overcome that is, and it's not just us that, that experiences this, this is a very common um, challenge for many environmental groups, for many social justice groups. And what we've done to overcome that is really to um, take advantage of the arts and culture and music and, and 
Um, an example of this is we have a fashion show yearly that showcases both um, the frontline communities, their campaigns, their struggles, but also sustainable clothing. And then um, we walk with science. And then this is, we frame it as sometimes this is the first face of activism that people will see. And we want it to be welcoming. We want people to feel like they have a space and that they are welcome in this space. Um, other ways that we've, we've uh, of course, um, overcome the challenge is really just exposing that it's not dangerous. It's it, no, not that, not that it's not dangerous, that, that it's safe to come and that it's right that we're doing this, that it's not supposed to be dangerous rather, and that it, um, and that climate justice is something that's attainable and giving people and, and sharing that, that realization with people is something that is so important in, in achieving the climate just world that we're fighting for. As a woman, I've faced some stigma because it, our, our line of work is not divorced from the reality of the bigger um, uh, social realities that we're experiencing as women. And so um, there have been experiences, especially as a young woman, where, you know, some government officials or some people who are like older in the generation will be like, oh, Iha, um, you don't know what you're saying, you know, that, that kind of tone. Or um, we'll look at you and think that you don't know or you do not have the agency or the knowledge to say what you're saying, despite it coming from lived experience and from experiences from communities that we've directly interacted with. Um, and another, of course, is also just the general um, how there's a lot of um, sexually, um, like comments that are sexually oriented, like, like, um, uh, hate trolls that will will comment on um, you being a woman versus on your work and and belittling you because of that. Um, and then of course, in the wider scale, not personally, uh, women environmental defenders and activists are more prone to harassment uh, through their family and sexual harassment, of course, especially with with militaries in their um, indigenous communities and other experiences. Once we all realize that a lot of our campaigns and fights for justice are all connected, so with the sustainable development goals are all connected. Like if I go at it from uh, the climate action one, it will affect the other ones and it will help and boost up the other ones. And once we start to realize that and make those connections, that's when we become stronger because we're no longer just fighting for one of the sustainable development goals or one of the, the issues, but really all of it. Um, and not in a way where we have to constantly do everything, but understanding that what we're doing contributes to everything. And that also makes us stronger and helps us understand our role and our place in the ecosystem of, of uh, uh, movements. Women play such a powerful role um, because not only are we half of the, approximately half of the population, um, we're also the half of the population that's affected the most by the by the the injustices that the sustainable development goals are trying to address. And so, as an example, with climate change, um, eighty percent of people, approximately eighty percent of people who are displaced by the climate crisis are women. Um, we know that. Um, the world's poor are the ones most affected by the climate crisis and the majority of the of the world's poor are also women. And we also know, and so many studies have already shown that um, in times of distress, in times of extreme weather events, um, gender-based and, and harassment and violence uh, does I increase. And so when you take out half of the population in creating the solutions, you take out the half that knows the problem deeper. And so the solutions that are created will leave out half of the population that um, are experiencing the worst impacts. And so you don't actually address the issues at hand. Uh, plenty of studies have shown that, um, as an example, when women, um, small farmers are given back their land, because like in the Philippines, a lot of our farmers are landless, the, it just inherently becomes more sustainable because the women know and understand the need to take care of the land. Um, We've also seen that who are the community leaders? Uh, who are the ones best to talk about disaster risk management and adaptation? It's the women because the women often in rural communities are the ones who are at home taking care of the households, taking care of the community, knowing each member of the village, knowing the children of the village and will know that, okay, this is not my child, but in this time of calamity, I have to take care of this child because this child is this person's child, you know? So it's 
women who really need to lead the way and not just any women but also especially women from the front lines women from the marginalized communities majority of the women in the philippines are workers and farmers and so they should also be the ones that are really on the front line because again it's it's that whole conversation around who gets to um bring in the solutions and if we think about the objectification of women and the objectification of the planet and the objectification of working class they all come from that same thread of greed and accumulation of power and the women in order to really liberate the world we need to liberate class as well women play such a powerful role <laughs> Thank you.